Welcome folks, nice to see you again on this Thursday lunchtime. A warm welcome to the ladies on the phones, hope you're all well. So we'll wait for a wee moment just to let some more people join us. And as usual, the words for today are in the description box below. If you want to contact us, Ian's details are there also. Hopefully most people have joined us now. So let's take a moment to calm our minds and our hearts and our spirits. Peace of Christ be with us all. Shall we say together? Though one has seen God, God's only Son, who is nearest to the Father's heart, has made him known in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear us, Shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth. Awaken your might. Come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Today's psalm is Psalm 79. Psalm 79. O God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. They have given the dead bodies of your servants as food to the birds of the air, the flesh of your saints to the beasts of the earth. They have poured out blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury the dead. We are objects of reproach to your neighbours, of scorn and derision to those around us. How long, O Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdom, kingdoms that do not call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob and destroyed his homeland. Do not hold against us the sins of the fathers, May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Help us, O God, our Saviour, for the glory of your name, deliver us and forgive us our sins, for your name's sake. Why should the nation say, Where is their God? Before our eyes make known among the nations that you have avenged the outpoured blood of your servants. May the groans of the prisoners come before you, by the strength of your arm, preserve those committed, condemned to die. Pay back into the laps of our neighbours seven times the reproach they have hurled at you, O Lord. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. From generation to generation we will recount your praise. We'll now say the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're still reading through Matthew, and we're on Matthew 26, verses 47 to 56. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. 
Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion? that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me. Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Shall we pray together? God, our hope, we rejoice that you became flesh and made your dwelling among us, and we long for your return. As we wait for your coming again, and for the end of sorrow, pain, and death, we are bold to ask in the name of Jesus for your kingdom to be made known among us now. Lead us by the groaning of your spirit to pray for ourselves and our suffering world. We'll now have a time of silent prayer where you can pray for, for the things which are on your heart and the things which God lays upon your heart. We pray in silence. Shall we pray together? Eternal God, for whom all people wait and search, even when they do not know it, open the eyes of the blind that they might see you. Open our eyes that have been closed by fear or blinded by self-pity, that we might see you even in the anxieties and uncertainties of our time. And in seeing you, be both comforted by your presence and made uncomfortable enough to seek to serve you, who is and was and is to come. Amen. Eternal God, you have set before us the great hope that your kingdom will come on earth and have taught us to pray for its coming. Make us ready to thank you for the signs of its dawning and to pray and work for the perfect day, when your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you as faithful, and he will do it. Amen. Thank you again, God, for listening to our prayers. Hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Stay safe.
Bye for now.